Welcome to another episode of High Proof Ashes. I am Jason J.B. Smoke, one of your co-hosts, and of course I have with me... Duran, no cool nickname. Y'all know the drill. Throw them in the comments. We're still rocking. Don't know what episode this is, but... Man, uh, I haven't seen... Know. I haven't really seen any, uh, you know, comments no, no for nicknames, nicknames comments. you know? I mean, we're getting comments, though. Right, we're we are, but no nickname right? comments. But no nickname comments. Yeah, so, so uh, y'all, y'all need to help us out with that, man. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, got something a little different for you guys today yeah um you know we've been we've been teasing some things for you guys and uh you know some some uh on location stuff yeah. and you know guest stuff and you know different spirits and that sort of thing and so uh today we have uh some tequila for you yeah man and um and, and actually one of them's a tequila and the other one is technically an agave yeah. spirit um but basically the same thing uh and they're Close both enough Close enough. Close enough. Um, you know, so we'll we'll get into uh, you know what these are, um, but let's get into the cigar real quick. Today, um, <laughs> Jason's nemesis. <laughs> you know, I'm not I'm not a fan of this one, but you know I, we've got two left, and uh, we're gonna give them a shot for you guys. Yeah. And tell you tell you what we think about it. It's been a long time since I've had one of these, so I mean yeah. it's probably it's been probably like ten months or something. I mean I'm t- I think it's over a year. Yeah. I think so it's over a year. This is the Jose Piedra, um, and it is a genuine Cuban. Cuban, yeah. Uh, so Jose El Piedra. It, now this this Cuban is um, the cool thing about this Cuban is is it's very inexpensive. Yeah, it was right? very inexpensive. Um, if I'm not mistaken, these were five or six bucks a piece. Yeah, it wasn't much. Um, you know, like they were extremely inexpensive, but it is a uh, it is a real Cuban. Um, so Jose El Piedra, we found out, has been around since 1880. Um, so, um, they've been making them for a while, but there's, a the, the thing about this cigar for Jason is everyone he's ever tried has had a terrible draw. Almost every one of them. Yep. Maybe one or two didn't. Um, All the other ones like couldn't smoke them. Had yeah. to put them down. Yeah. So we're, we're going to go back to it, um, and, and see if same problem after this one is aged. It, Jason says at least 10 months. I'm saying over a year. Uh, but let's, let's find out what it's, what it's like after sitting and aging <sighs> right like- here. I feel like I'm playing roulette with the with the jaw in this thing. Man. <laughs> like the house, you know what I'm saying? The house odds are terrible, right? It's a one in thirty six or whatever it is. Oh man, nothing special on the smell. No, nothing like, special at all. Um, I think it's gonna be there. It's a tight draw. I think it's gonna be fucking rough. <laughs> it's a freaking tight ass draw, man. I don't know. I, they just they put too much in there. All right, I cut deeper. I mean, you can't cut so deep that it starts to unravel on you. Well, actually, that might have been what I just did, literally. But we'll see. So, I, you know, I wanted to get a little preview there. But on our spirits. Oh, my God. So the, the two on the sides here are the same spirit, but we're showing you the two different sides of the spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the, the Good Times. Uh, well, I think it's the Casa Good Times, what they call it. Uh, but this is their Reposado. That is uh, an agave spirit that's uh, aged in an Orm Dream Sickle barrel. Yes. And so I was able to taste this before it got dropped, and I just was blown away and couldn't wait for it to come out, and it just came out. Um, so shout out to Rufin at Red Hot. Only here yes. can you get this, right? So uh, if you go to the Good Times Instagram, you'll see that the only place to get this specific bottle is right here in uh, Cleveland, Tennessee at Red Hot. That's right. Um, our local liquor store and our, our local spirits guy who always goes above and beyond for us, as you can see with the little decorations here. You know, we got the little party <laughs> bottle. Um, so shout out to Red Hot. Shout out to Rupin. Um, but, yeah, big things popping over there at Red Hot. And what do we got here with the El Tesoro? Yeah, so so to compete, right, to put a pit against those good times, um, we've got the El Tesoro Reposado uh tequila so it's a it's a genuine tequila mm-hmm. and uh, i believe it's aged uh somewhere between six and eight eight months okay um in a previous bourbon barrel you know so uh but they're both reposado so they both have that that same or similar mm-hmm. uh you know age um probably different type of bourbon barrel right yeah. different brand yeah. or what have you uh we i don't think we know which which one it is for the good times no um oh, i don't think i know which one it is for the alto Soro either but it's genuine or it's Got to be two different ones, yeah. right? Yeah. So I would think so. But we're gonna do a tequila episode, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. You ready I mean, for this? Let's do it. I don't so, know if I am, but well, I, you know. 
So let's light up and, uh, you know, we'll look at some, some proof statements and, you know, other things here as we, uh, as we make our course. Yeah, it's going to be a dog fight. It's like trying to trying to drink a shake that's not ready to be drank yet. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? A, like this is going to be rough. It's just too thick, you know? Like Like I don't feel like I'm getting it. <laughs> yeah. I'm look. Like I think yours is actually drawing better than mine. It might be. And like this if I remember right, the smoke production on these is horrible. The draw is horrible. <laughs> you know, like we were, we were talking about before we started the episode about how, you know, these companies rate cigars and like, I feel like they don't rate anything under a 70. Right, right. Right. It's like they really start at 70, you know, and so it's like, you know, really they only rank from 70 to 100. I really wish that they would give me some 20s and 30s and 40s yeah. and you know what I mean? Like, like, and, and I think if, there's a misconception that if something's rated 20 out of 100, it must be terrible, right? Oh, this is, okay, look, watch, wait. I mean, your cherry's glowing, but you, I know it's like you got nothing out of it, right? I know, I know. So, like, but there's this misconception that, like, if something's rated a 20 out of 100, it must be bad. And, and I think that's a consumer misconception. I think that our, these companies that rate need to do a better job at communicating what they're trying to say, right? And so this would possibly be a 20 out of 100 and something that would be a 50 out of 100 would be two and a half times better than this. You right. know, like, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then something that's rated a 70 would be, you know, three and a half times better than this mm -hmm. or whatever. And so I, I just, I feel like if the band were much bigger, you could fit more in there and get some better nuance in the rankings and the ratings and right. all that kind of right. stuff. But when I see 50 cigars rated at a 92, there's no differentiation between any of them. Right. Like you're telling me they're e they're all equal, like down to the to the point? No. Like it's hard for me to believe. It's, it's just not true. Right. It's just really hard for me to believe. And so like we could start we could go and pull out a a um a, you know, a cigar aficionado or even one of those uh, catalogs, right, where they put the numbers on there for you and just pull out all of the things that are, you know, 90 and above. And I will probably agree that they're all great cigars, but my separation between worst and best is going to be way more than nine points because yeah, they've never done a yeah, hundred. For sure, they've only for had sure. one cigar that's been rated a ninety-nine. But that's so, the thing. Like I said, like we we said that you know, like hey, here's the deal. If they were to change their rating scale, and they rated someone's cigar like that, what would it do to their brand? Right. Right. Um, so that's probably why I understand. They don't, I understand. You know, um, yeah, this is gonna be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, look, I'm already, I already feel like I'm having to touch it up. Like, I, I'm, I'm itching to just go ahead well, and touch so this the up. The problem and... for me is, is um, I'm not getting any smoke. I, I mean, no, you're not wrong. I'm, I'm, bare, I'm getting very little. Like, I'm getting more than you, but very little. Yeah. Um. So I'll, we'll tell you guys, like, at the very least, we have a backup. <laughs> it's right there. Um, if this just isn't going to drink. Let's get a let's drink. Let's get a 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 drink. So, I'm going to start El Tesoro. I, I love it. Go for it. All right. I'll do it with you. <laughs> <laughs> He's just... <laughs> He was the one that wanted to do this. I did. I did. I, I, did. I was like, this. it can't be that bad. Like, <laughs> I don't remember it being this bad. Like, and I'm like, are you sure? Because it's not good. It's not great. Like, it's... so guys, I do not drink tequila. So y'all bear with my faces as I go through this, okay? Like, uh, which these are sipping tequilas, so it, I was gonna it say, won't be that bad. There's the for the ones that have been sort of vetted for him. He, he tends to... Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Like, you know, so I, I know these are not bad. Um, yeah. You know, I'm just and, not a tequila guy. Yeah, and this is low proof. I mean, for us, it's 80 proof. Yeah, we, we'll you be know, fine. So, like, yeah, I mean, this is nothing. It's not, gonna, you know, it's not overpowering, you know. Um, so I'm going to try to give this thing some... No, I'm not going to give it any praise, like, realistically. 
Uh, there's nothing going on here. Like it, it's a cheap Cuban. Is one band, Jose El Piedra. Um, you know, it's red and white. Uh, actually, it doesn't even. It, it's very inexpensive. <laughs> the look is very inexpensive. If you don't know it's a Cuban, you would probably never pick this up. Um, you know, but it is a genuine Cuban, and it's very inexpensive. Um, but overall, so far, it's burning weird. Um, so not great construction, I would say. Um, and so here's the thing. So it's not even for me smoking too fast because I can't get anything out of it. So uh, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. And like, here's the thing, you know, sometimes, and I, I've done this before, sometimes you can like find that there's like a, like a hard spot, a hard spot, right? Yeah. And maybe you can like just cut it and smoke from there. Right. But like this whole thing is hard as look, hell. Look, 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 like look. they're like, there's a little bit of softness here at the, and the, you know, I'm going to try uh, to trick the first half. I, I took it off and see if, oh, the band. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's loose though. So. It, it was already a loose band. Yeah. Like you were able to just slide it right off. So that wasn't. Well, mine wasn't, wouldn't slide. I tried. Oh, okay. So. This one was, this one, yeah, was already loose. I mean, so here's the thing. It, it's drawing because the cherry's lighting when, when I. There's when air I coming through. There's air coming through somewhere. There's not just, a lot of combustion. That's it's the thing. Just, it's packed in there, man. Like when you look at it, you can see it's just like. Yeah. So I will say this. I've been told that Cuban Cubans are supposed to be stored at a at a lower humidity, so it's yes. possible that these are just over humidified. So that that can't be true because when we got them, they have the same problem. It was the same problem. You're right. I mean, you're right. I'm just saying, like, I don't know if if you know carrying these at sixty percent would have made a difference. You know, over time, maybe, maybe, but I mean, we'll never know because this is it. Yeah, done. But, I mean, I don't know how I would do that. Like, I don't have anything that holds at 60%. I don't have any bovidas. Like, mm -hmm. that would be too much work to, to do it, like, manually with beads or juice or anything like that. So, like, I would never do it. It's just, just too much work. And I'm not a Cuban guy. Like, right. there's just too many other cigars out there that we can readily and easily get that store just perfectly fine in the humidor. I agree. What, you know. So, my question being now, how far do we go before we switch? Well... I mean, we got a couple of options. We could just do a short episode, or we. But we got two different tequilas to try here. Right. Like, you want me to I'm... take in two tequilas in ten minutes? No. <laughs> <laughs> but and this one here is not low proof. No, no. So, all right, let, let's talk about these uh, tequilas here. All right. So this one, the 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 El Tesoro Reposado. The the aroma on it is is just super light, yeah. but you get that bourbon barrel aging in there just ever so slightly. And like to me, it almost has a lime flavor to it. Mm -hmm. And and lime aroma lime aroma. Like I tell people like this thing is it's almost like a margarita in a in so a bottle. The, the beauty is is right, I'm not a huge fan of peppery, citrusy tequila. This has just enough of the lime, citrus, whatever you want to call it, flavor that mm -hmm. it's faint enough that it's good. Right. But the pepper's not there. For no, me. it's not. So this is very enjoyable as a tequila. Like I've taken this and put it over some crushed ice with just a little squirt of simple syrup. Yeah. And that's this it. Is, this is a weekend on the porch refresher all day. Dude, like, I'm telling you. Throw this on some ice like you said. Oh, dog, so you know. good. It's so good. You could go with this all day. Like maybe just a squirt of lime, you know, just to punch up the lime a little mm -hmm. bit more. Like, mm -hmm. man, like you, yeah. this, this could really mess you up because you're, you, it would be yeah, much you, higher proof than a margarita should be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But it's very good. It's, you know. It's one of my favorites, honestly. Yeah, this is one that I will take like outside on the porch, you know, when it's a nice day, mm -hmm. and just and just sip on it, you know, when it's the, bourbon is difficult to drink when it's really hot outside. Yes, I you agree. You know what I'm saying? But but this tequila lends itself very well to you know kind of putting your mindset of the tropics almost. 
You know, it's tequila. Here he goes trying to relight it. He's trying to, he's trying to, I got a little more. I got a little more. Did you? Okay. It's just, and then there's not a lot of flavor. There's almost no strength. Like, it, it just does nothing for me. It's the fact that, so I, I can tell you what it is for a lot of people on this cigar. It's a Cuban. It's a Cuban. That doesn't do anything for me though, like um, because we're I, flavor guys. Well, and... I'm I'm I am smoking it and and rating it or whatever, just as a cigar. Yeah, like the fact that it's a Cuban means almost Zero. nothing to me. Zero, like yeah. so, like nothing. It doesn't mean anything more or less than any other cigar from any other country. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I it, mean, I, I think when you think cigars, right, like the first thing that comes to mind for any person that genuinely like is Cuban, right? Like, sure. So if you if you think for like the tradition of cigars, you think Cubans. Yeah, right? I agree. Um, so it's just that there's so many non-Cubans out there that are fantastic. just as good or yeah. better yeah. than a lot of your Cubans. You know, there's no, you know, from what I understand, there's there's no like, how do I say it? I don't want to say consistency, but there's no like quality control. Right. You know, there's no guarantee that the product you're getting is the same all the time or that it's what they say it is for that matter because you know the only way we can get them is out of the united states right and so that means we're buying from some other location you know and unless they're super reputable you don't know what you're buying that's it true. could be fakes like they're you know there's fake cubans out there like, everywhere like everywhere everywhere and we because we don't partake with cubans like it's it would be hard for us to know the difference well i would i would make a phone call you know yeah, we probably yeah, could. I'd phone a friend. John Crowder. Yeah, that's probably true. John, tell me what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. like, what is this box supposed to say? Right. But now you're in a shop, you know, picking up boxes and looking underneath them and, you know, trying to find a little inspector tag. And I know. said that the other day and he literally said to me, who gives a fuck? <laughs> that's what he said to me. He said, you know, I mean, that's something John would say. Yeah. Right. And he's like, who gives a fuck? Right. You want to make sure that you're buying something genuine and Here's the thing, like you're gonna pay a pretty penny for it, so yeah, you better pick up the box and check. Well, and, and so my thing would be like, I would want to go to some like world-renowned, reputable shop. Yeah. Right. That yeah. that pretty much, you know, their reputation's on the line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you go into a place like that, and you're gonna pay double what you'd pay mm -hmm. at Joe Blow down the street, yep. who nobody knows, right? But there, you run the risk of not knowing what you're buying. And the. the, the problem with this is the smoke that i am getting is just so light uh, yeah i know i mean like i mean it look, is on the bottom end of the spectrum as far as like strength so look and we, bottom end of the spectrum right. on flavor i know we're like 15 minutes in i i would not be opposed to just throwing this down and grabbing the other cigar that we're you know planning on doing and let's just run for about 30 minutes on that and it'll be just a 45 minute episode. Sure call, but what about the bourbons? Are we gonna switch drinks in the middle? Mm -mm. Like, what, you know. Mm -mm. Are we'll we gonna No, we'll stay with the uh we'll stay with the, the tequilas. We're just gonna switch over to another cigar. Your call, man. I mean, we're halfway through the episode. I don't care at this point, like, you know, I mean I'm am I really gonna fight it? No. Uh what I'm probably gonna do is like put this motherfucker down, enjoy the drinks, and uh not so much worry about the uh cigar. Because it's I'm already pretty close to through my pour in. I haven't tried the cream sickles, so. All right. Well, look, let's just push through it. I mean, this is this is part of the podcast and part of the cigar journey of, you know, you're gonna find stuff you don't like. And and we have not had a cigar that we want to put down. <laughs> like we've had stuff we don't like that's not for us, but we yeah. still smoked through the whole thing. Yeah, I don't because it was decently constructed. If and, I could get smoke, I'd, you know, I'd smoke it. I know. I hear the you. The problem is not that I don't think it's a terrible cigar, right? Yeah, I do. I think it's a terrible cigar. It's not a good cigar. Like um, I would tell people not to get it. Yeah. The problem is, it's just like there's not even a defense that like you know you can smoke it to pass time. Right. It's I, there. When we recently was out at John's birthday party, right? I pulled a, a quorum. <laughs> no, I was surprised you did that. I couldn't taste shit anymore. I guess like, I had, I, that's exactly I had, what you I said had too. Two cigars. We had drank heavily. 
Yeah, so true. my taste buds was dead. I just wanted to smoke at that point. Right. You just wanted to smoke something. I just wanted to smoke. Yeah. So I pulled out a quorum. I regretted Which, it the next morning yeah. when, I, when I woke up and I could taste that shit. <laughs> uh, that's funny as hell. Regretted it then. Like, that's funny as hell. You smoke. What the fuck is that awful something, taste? Something a little. Yeah. You go a little cheaper, you're going to be able to tell. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that unless unless you're someone that wants a ridiculously tight draw, almost no smoke production, very little flavor, very little smoke, like very little strength. Like, I don't. You want to go to a cigar lounge and hang out with your buddies and pretend to smoke a cigar? Here's the one. Yeah, all right. You're not ah! getting anything. You're not like, getting jack uh -uh. shit from this thing. Like, I retro it, and I, there's almost nothing there on the retro. It's so light. Here's what I can say. There's a little bit more smoke as I move up the cigar, right? As we go out of that first third into the second, there's more smoke. But it's still not enough for me to be happy. And you got to get through that first third. Yeah. To get there. Like, I don't know. Not... It, it's not, I wouldn't even say that's just not for me. I would say this is almost not for anybody. Like, I don't know why. I get it's cheap, but like, I can throw you a, a cigar that's about a buck fifty that's better than that. Like, I'm not kidding. You know, so, like, <laughs> I just, there's just no reason. All right, so which one of these tequilas is uh, good? Um, um, this one is open right here. So, all right, let's, 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 I'm going to hand let's it to you. Let's take off its uh, hat here. Yeah. Take, take off the little sombrero. Is yeah, a little sombrero? Some, yeah, a little sombrero here. So I'm going to read what it says here. Um, single barrel, blue agave spirit, aged a minimum of six months in a good times bourbon barrel. Okay, so so they put it in a, in a good times barrel. Um, and so if you don't know, uh, the reason that this is not a tequila and that it's an agave is, uh, is that uh, there are two, as far as I know, there are two definite requirements in order to call something a tequila. One, okay. one, it has to be made with blue agave, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and two, it has to be made in a certain region of Mexico. Okay. So you can use blue agave in another region, but you, then you can't call it tequila, and so then you got to call it agave, which is what the plant actually is. And uh, you know something interesting about tequila, like we were talking about the other day, was that most of the age for tequila is in the plant while it's in the ground. Right. You know, and so a lot of these agave plants, they go for, you know, 5, 10, 20, 25 years. There's some that go that long. And then when they distill it, they just immediately bottle it unless they're going to do a Reposado right. or an Añejo or an Extra Añejo, which is simply and then they just... age it for another 6 to 12 months. In the, whatever. In the right. Yep. So, you know, but most of the age is, is in the plant in the ground. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, but this one, they run it through that extra process of, of finishing it in the uh, the orm, orange dream sickle. So we didn't talk about uh, price difference between them. Uh, what's the price oh. on the El Tesoro? Uh, the El Tesoro, so the, rep, the, the Reposado is 62, I think okay. it was. Okay. Uh, the Añejo is actually not that much more, but I actually prefer the Reposado over the Añejo. It's just a personal preference. Um, but if you just wanted it more age on a barrel... You know, I you think it's like maybe, yeah, yeah. it's like ten bucks more. Yeah. So it's not a whole lot more. And then the the good times was um, was seventy as well. Okay. Yeah. Which, well, that that's that's right? different. Yeah. Right. It's good times. It's less than a hundred dollars. That's different. <laughs> right? uh, a good time so, under a hundred. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's something, right? <laughs> so I was really surprised when it was that much, but also very happy because. So I can tell you immediately, I get way more bourbon on this. Okay. Like on the smell. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a hefty pour of this one. Th this one's also a hefty pour. Yeah, because I really liked it when I tasted it in the store. I got lucky and just walked into the store and there was they were there were some guys there with samples that, you know, were letting me taste. But this is 111 proof. Oh, yeah. I told you it was higher proof. <laughs> That's did. a lot higher. <laughs> um, okay. So a little, little bro topper there. Mm. That's interesting as hell. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. That's just a lot. <laughs> what, what, what you mean though? What's a lot? Come on, give us like, a little more. Oh man, 
um, agave, uh, creamsicle, a little bit of bourbon sweetness. And I like, immediately get that orange dream sickle. Like, that's impressive. When I tasted it in the store, I went, oh my God. Yo, that's... When are you getting that? The mouth feel on it. Pause. It's not like a tequila. <laughs> like, it's been a while. It has been a while. But like, this you know, is good. Ah, it's almost like you're, it, you're almost drinking a bourbon. I mean, and, and the, the nose is bourbon. Like, the mouthfeel is bourbon. Like, it's more viscous than tequila usually is. And then the proof gives you that bourbon punch like you're used to with bourbon. You know, because most tequilas are less than 100. But the bourbon sweetness is there, too. Oh, yeah, it's there. Like, this is... The, this is This is good. <laughs> this one is really good. Here's a th I, nothing like tequila. It isn't anything like tequila. It's some kind of merry mint. You get you. It's there, but it's this weird kind of fifty fifty. It's so very faint. Right. It's so you're thinking more. It's more like seventy thirty bourbon tequila. It's more bourbon. Okay. It's definitely you get, more bourbon. Okay. I mean, it's hard to argue that because. Man, the aroma on that is just something. Yeah, it's nice. Like, this is why I didn't have to taste it at the store because, like, I already knew. Like, if I it's, might buy a bottle. If it's affordable, I might like, buy a bottle. I was like, if it's affordable, I'm getting two bottles. Like, just to have, you know. I'm going to wait till it shows now. back up on Wednesday because I, I know somebody will bring it again on Wednesday. I'll definitely bring it. Um, try it again then. And if I mm -hmm. like it again then, as much as I do right now, I'll probably buy a bottle. Okay. Oh, so before I forget, um, this bottle was uh, picked by uh, a, a few of our, our friends and folks, right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's and do some shout course. outs here to uh, About Bourbon, yep. um, Tennessee uh, Cigars and Bourbon Society, mm -hmm. which we are... I actually put my shirt on today. Huh? You did. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got our tin cap shirt on. So um, our bourbon commander helped pick this, um, you know, so... If you if you are able to pick this up, just know that some of the proceeds will go to our nonprofit. Cool beans. But I don't think this one's gonna last nah. in the store. That's why I said be, Wednesday. If I like you. it, I'm gonna buy it. Like we you know, we we've been talking about the short barrel about how it might not last. And it, it probably won't. Um I and listen, the, the the one I was telling you about earlier, um, that he had me taste when I went to pick this up that's dropping next week um when i tell you that i think that it's somewhere between little stag and daddy stag like who's making who's the it was um rick, it was rick something i was i was in a rush this morning you know i told you like i've been go, i've been at go. it since eight o'clock this morning like i was go 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 um but he's he's gonna he's probably gonna post about it soon you okay. know to let people know but it was it was very very good very very good i think it was an eight year aged so i'm gonna I'm go as far mm -hmm. as saying like uh the good times kind of blow that el tesoro out of the water man like if you're if it's you're almost talking, un, it's almost unfair it is because they're like, diff, they're so extremely different yeah. okay? like it, but it, if if you was like if you're saying like duran you got to drink a tequila <laughs> You got you found your one, huh? The good times, like fuck. The rain, you got to drink a tequila. It's that, like yeah. It just let me get that good times. But actually, this is not a tequila. Again, it's it's not actually technically, a technically, it's not. Um, it, it's it's a it's a tequila in spirit because it is made with blue agave. Yes. So it's made with the same stuff as tequila, just not in that area. So legally, they can't call it a tequila, but. It, it's is, almost in the in the flavors. It's almost not a tequila. All right, I'm gonna try to give this thing a boost here. Yeah, that cream sickle is like I didn't like it in the, the good times bourbon, mm -hmm. right? But let me no, not I say, let me not say I didn't I, like. I it. was unimpressed. I didn't. It wasn't good enough for me to want to go purchase. Thank it. you, thank you. Wasn't enough for me to go and spend hundred dollars on $100. this at seventy. 
it's it's special. Yeah. But I, I think it's the combination right. of what they did here. So there's there's some there's some floral and fruity notes that the tequila brings, right? Mm -hmm. And then you put it in that bourbon barrel mm -hmm. and it gets those tannins from the bourbon right. barrel. And then you add on top of that that orange creamsicle barrel. Like yeah. it's just it's nice. You just got flavors on it's top refreshing. of flavors on top of flavors. Yeah. Like it's really refreshing, yeah. right? Like like I could I'm, actually bring both of these bottles outside. In, in, I was about in the to summertime. say I would actually like to do this in a large glass with ice. Yeah, definitely. I would. I'd love to try it. And I honestly, I think I could bounce between these two. You know, while I'm outside having a cigar, yeah. enjoying the weather. You know, whatever. Like, because it's not. It's not like heavy and I don't, heavy is the wrong way. I can't. It, it's hard for me to describe how bourbon doesn't work in the heat. Right. Like, I don't know. I guess it's, it's just an I age. mean, it does work in the heat, right? Like, it, you can't, we can't say it doesn't work in the heat because I drink bourbon in the heat. I mean, I do too, but, but it, it, I'd prefer not to, right? Like, it just. The high proof, I think, the higher proof is probably what, what does it, right? Like, yeah, that's probably it. I mean, but this is high proof, and I, I could honestly see. But I, I think it would have the same effect on us as bourbon would. If, you think so? If we had it for an extended period. What we're saying is it's refreshing. It tastes refreshing. Right. I think it would have the exact same. <laughs> Yeah, that's probably you know. true. I didn't think about that. You're right, because like this right here is is low proof. Most of the things that I would bring outside when it's warm would be low proof, lower this, proof. This yeah. would very quickly, you know, would turn into okay, two two good pours in, you'd be like, man, it's hot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm, I'm sweating, I'm sweating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I mean, I think that's that's what it is. Like, it yeah, tastes right. refreshing, but the proof on it, however. Would, would put you in that situation of where you are with bourbon. So, yeah. Um, but, you know, we're 32 minutes into this thing. Um, we haven't given our plugs yet. So make sure to like, comment, subscribe, right? Hit the notification bell so that you know when we post. Um, you know, and as always, please, please drink and smoke responsibly. Uh, you know, we've, we've got our waters. Yep. Um, you know how we do. Same difference every week, you know. Yeah, man. Making sure that we are uh, hydrating while we I mean, just, record the podcast. You know, take care of yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, know your limits. Know your know limits. limits. Like, you know, we're 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 not getting any younger, and like, we don't want to wake up the next morning feeling like crap and have to mm -hmm. spend the next day just recovering. That's no fun. No, not you at don't, all. You don't ever want to do that. Not at all. And I mean, a good way to do that is to just make sure you get enough water. Mm -hmm. You know. So, but I guess we should do our final thoughts. So the cigar, I mean, it's, it's barely smokable. I, I mean, I'm just being honest. Like I've had it's some, pointless. I've had some really, I would rather have a Cuban round. At least it fucking smokes. smokes. I get it. It tastes bad, but at least it fucking smokes. smokes yeah. You know, like if, <laughs> at that point, I just want to smoke something. I, I mean, yeah. You know, same thing with the quorum and, you know, I'm black, you know, black pearl, Gurkha. <laughs> Right, we Gurkha, about, Gurkha might not be as bad as the other ones we just named. You know, so now Gurkha, okay, so the the Gurkha's under twenty. I don't know about the Gurkha's over twenty because I've never bought those. Like they got a they got a ton that are like age. But you say a decades. Gurkha is as bad as a Cuban round or a Quorum? No, it like might, it's not enjoyable. Okay, I've so, never had one that I enjoyed, but so it, it definitely is not. If, like I can't smoke a Quorum when I'm not heavily intoxicated. Right. Okay, so if this is a ten. And a, and a quorum and a, and a Cuban round is a 20, then a Gurkha is a 30. That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, it's, not it's a the little same. bit better. Yeah, it's not the but same. I don't want to smoke it by choice. Or no, like if I'm but not, it's still like, not, a, it's not a Cuban round or a quorum. Okay, all right, I'll give you that. <laughs> I'll concede a little bit yeah. there. Because <laughs> <laughs> we do give some shit to, to Gurkha. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so, but that's it on the cigar. On the spirits, the El Tesoro is amazing. I love it. It's one of the first mm -hmm. sipping tequilas that, um, that Corey... Mm -hmm you know, help me find and try and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And I, like you said, it's super light and refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's got this lime citrusy kind of note to it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's sweet. Um, and, and if you don't want to drink it straight, throw that thing over some crushed ice, mm -hmm. you know, and if you want a little more sweetness, put a little, little, little squirt of simple syrup in there. And I'm telling you, man, it, you'll think you're drinking a margarita. Yeah. You'll think you're drinking the smoothest, 
cleanest tasting, refreshing margarita, margarita. Yeah. that you've ever had because it doesn't have any of that nasty mix in it. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's very good. I like it a lot. And then the good times, man. I, ah, man, I don't know, man. It's it's going to be a hard time to not not drink these on, yeah, on like the regular. That. I could see you visiting that bottle a lot. I could too. So I'm, I might be in trouble with this bottle. But how about you, man? So not much to add on the El Tesoro. Uh, as a, a guy who doesn't drink a lot of tequila, the El Tesoro is very approachable, right? Um, if you're not a tequila person and you want to uh, venture into the tequila realm, I'd take a look at the El Tesoro, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you want a traditional tequila, right. um, it's, it's worth it. Uh, you know, like I said, very light on the palate. Um, doesn't give you a lot of the peppery taste that you get from most tequilas. Nope. Um, very little citrus, right? Enough to that you know it's there and it's pleasant. Um, you know, and, and I think it's got a very good price point as well. Um, the good times, yo, this is a smash. Like, Rufin did his thing on that. Like, um, <laughs> like shout out what? to the folks that that picked this joint out because it is is fire. It's absolute fire. It's fire. Like. Um, like part of me is is because of how little they made part of me is happy that you it's only a one location yeah so the whole barrel yeah went to Rupin right yeah, yeah. yeah. um but you know <clears throat> if you want to buy some at a premium let us know <laughs> right? no right? I'm joking I'm joking that's illegal <laughs> as hell that's illegal as hell I am joking um you know but it, it's good it's very good it's very good the cigar the words I just said it's pointless um it, it just it it's not a good cigar it's not a flavorful cigar um and then with the construction issues it's just pointless to buy um i think that's the harshest i've ever been on a cigar and i you always tell me like you know like don't don't go so hard on them like you know and i that this one's pointless so if i'm gonna be honest i have only had one cigar that was worse than this in my life only one and it was made here in america actually it's it was a uh a, a uh i'm gonna call it a house cigar but it, it was a cigar that the shop had like they made they made they had their own rollers they bought the tobacco they literally made the cigar themselves mm. um but they didn't do a good job of aging the tobacco because i it was like i was smoking ammonia so like That's, that was literally unsmokable. Yeah. This is at least barely smokable. I mean, okay, so, but I don't know like, if that's true either. Like that that cigar was a zero. Yeah, yeah like yeah. that cigar was literally you no don't and smoke again, if you're smoking so, You know, maybe we're using the wrong cut. Maybe a guillotine ain't it. Maybe I don't, I don't so know. So I read something interesting about that, and I know we're we're almost we're pretty much over time, but that that the the guillotine cut, the straight cut, is the cut that almost every cigar is intended to receive right because it opens up 80 plus percent of the cigar yeah so i don't know how much more we could open it up with a different cut you couldn't i just i mean all i'm thinking is maybe you know there i don't know I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. Yeah, that's right. Like, I haven't picked mine up in quite a so, bit. I'm, uh, you know, I've been I, enjoying uh, your good time. Like I boosted it to just see, you know, but it, it, it's just, I, I'm done with it. No, so anyway, okay. like, but we'll, we'll wrap this up and, uh, you know, um, this will be our, probably our worst review ever for a cigar. Hopefully. Hopefully. I well, hope it is. With that being said, shall we wrap up? <laughs> Let's wrap it up, man. Yo, thank y'all for joining us on another episode of mm -hmm. High Proof Ashes. Y'all know what it is, man. Ah, too bad that, you know, we had to give this review, but join us on the next episode. I'm Duran, my co-host. I'm Jason J.B. Smoke. And, I mean, look, we're all about honesty, right? Two average guys smoking cigars and drinking uh, spirits. And I don't know. He keeps saying this two average guys thing. I'm, I'm, I'm above average. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> look at this dude trying to elevate himself. I don't know what he's talking about with his average cigar stuff. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah I get what he's trying to say, but... Sorry. So now we're above average? We've been above average. Okay. Or at least me. Right. I don't know about okay. you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> we will see you guys next time. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> see